Hi, we're Laura and Dan. We've bought a beautiful rustic Portuguese barn and have literally zero knowledge of building and farming, but plan on converting it into a beautiful off-grid homestead. Follow us on our journey. When change and struggle was invited into our lives, we knew it was going to bring a lot with it. Our journey is evolving each day, and with the rains hopefully starting to come to an end, we have many big projects that await us. With minimal experience, we made the decision to move off grid. Already having a temporary shelter, we felt confident that we could face any challenges Mother Nature put in our way. Deciding to live off grid has taught us many valuable lessons already. Choosing the best places to direct our energy is key. We need to think about what materials are best to build with for greater longevity, and we also have to choose the order in which we do jobs because of our current residency situation. This week started out better than the last. We eventually were able to move the van. I'm so grateful that the van's not stuck in that spot anymore. I mean, it's still actually trapped on the land because the, the track's just far too muddy for the van to even consider getting up there. But we're making progress, so that's a bonus. So the rain's holding off a little bit. Hopefully we can get a few more days where it's not raining so we can actually start doing some jobs. I feel like we've been a little bit stagnant since we've got here because of the rain, but hopefully it starts to clear up soon. We picked up some free foam boards and we had the idea to use it as a makeshift insulation for the outhouse. Dan fitted the insulation all around the outhouse windows and shower. The difference was so noticeable. It was then time to finish off cladding the roof and the walls. starting to take shape. Uh, I think what I, what I really like about the kind of the using the tongue and groove cladding is that it just goes up really uh, quick which makes the job a lot easier but it's starting to look really nice and I can imagine when this is all done it's going to really start to finish it off what we've already accomplished so far it's going to really finish it off nicely especially now with the, the makeshift insulation in. space to move things around in here is there? No, it's like we're, we're like Laurel and Hardy up here. That's the roof all done. Now I'm so chuffed with how it's come out. Now we just need to start doing the walls and it's just come together so nicely. I love cladding, it's just one of those jobs where everything just falls into peace dead easy. 
We then fitted the battery monitor, a few switches for light and a control panel. So I'm really chuffed to actually get the chance to use this set. So this was actually a set, there's a little bit of a story behind this because um, when my granddad passed away, um, one of the first things I did was kind of collect, collect a lot of his old tools. And my granddad used to be a woodman and he used to do a lot, he used to do a lot of woodwork and stuff and have a lot of good woodworking skills. So I'm really chuffed to be able to carry, kind of carry that legacy on in some shape or form and be able to utilise it in kind of building things on the land. I don't think I'm going to get up to his standard, but um, I strive to anyway. <laughs> Oh yeah. So we're just up to the final pieces of cladding now. These are more of the fiddly bits, but I think we'll cope. I'm excited to see how it looks once it's all done. Fits nicely. Fits like a glove. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Look at the sun. On the, uh, the sun's shining, we're going to go for a jog this morning to blow off the cobwebs. Dad, I don't think you've got the right gear on for a jog. Oh, I better get that sorted then. Time to go for a jog. Now the jog's done. Time to crack on with the real work. We also picked up some building materials from the city. Definitely putting gloves on this time to carry the, the sheet metal up to the top of the land because when I was picking these up <laughs> I ended up slicing my hand and uh, it's not good. Sheet metal is not good uh, for paper cuts. It's like one up from paper. See?
so two ten and a half. How good is it, Laura, to feel that sun on your skin? It's class. And everything just looks really beautiful in the sun with the greenery and stuff. It's just, yeah, it's lush. It makes working outside a lot easier, doesn't it? It does. I can't believe it's winter and we can just work outside and not like, and not feel really cold and my hands not go purple and it's just, yeah, different kettle of fish. Safety first. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. taking a little break from work and then what we're going to do is we're going to try and make some orange juice with the oranges that the neighbour give us. It just goes to show how many oranges actually go into your orange juice. I've done maybe about 15 oranges now and this is how much juice actually comes out. Probably a glass maybe. So just goes to show the bottles of orange juice that you buy how many oranges are actually going in them. My nanny used this you know. I know. Which is mint. So um, I remember my nanny in the past like she used to kind of do the make lemonade and stuff. Mm -hmm. She used the lemons and put them on here so rest in peace nana. Taste test, Laura. You're gonna go first, tell us what you think. That's lush. Is it good? <laughs> That's the best taste in orange juice I've ever had. To the bang? To the bang. Come with Tash? See? It's too hot, Tima. What do you think? I'm drank it, yeah. <laughs> Give us a check in. I know you want it back. <laughs> what do you think? Mm. It's good, isn't it? Really good. This is why I moved to this country. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Getting it in my beard. <laughs> After soaking up the sun and having our breakfast, we continued with the outhouse. One side's in, two sides in, one more to go, and it'll finish this off nicely. Silicon now, silicon in, and then she's done. Getting closer to be able to have a shower in here. Yeah, I'll have another wash for about five weeks. <laughs> Maybe longer. It'll feel so good. So the silicon is all now done. I'm gonna give that a little bit of time to set. And that's it, it's all done now, so it's, it's shower time. It wasn't quite shower time as we needed to add some gloss for extra protection. I wish I could turn back time mm -mm -mm. Stay up all night singing songs on the terrace We didn't mind sitting out in the cold It was impossible to make us embarrassed We were free Do you remember stealing smokes from your parents? 
Sometimes we got a bit out of control. When they found out we ran from home just to scare them, we were free. When we were 17. So the outhouse is pretty much done now. We've got the electrics in. As you can see, we've got a little switch here so we can change the lights, so we can put them 50% brighter, 100% brighter, 25%. So you can choose what level of brightness you want. The battery to battery monitor, so that says that the lights are using five watts at the moment, which is pretty, pretty energy efficient. We also have the water pump, so we can just turn that on and off if we want to pump water into the boiler for the shower. Bought this cheap little reel just for our clothes and for towels when we have a shower in here. Probably might get another one in the future, but this will do for now. We've got the cladding up, so we've got this cladding that we bought. This covering one half of the outhouse, and we've also got cladding the other half of the outhouse. It's some of the offcuts of wood that we got from the wood yard, so it's a bit of a mismatch, but it's uh, it's definitely cheap and cheerful, but it's just rustic and we really like it. Here we've got the tiles on the floor. We really like these ones because they look quite Portuguesey, so that's why we went for them. And so that just means that when we come out the shower, we can just stand onto here and we're not getting any of the wooden floor wet, which would be a disaster. So yeah, really chuffed with them. We've also got the Camplux boiler, which we really like. We've got one of these inside the van and we just really love it for our shower in there. So we'll put another one for the outhouse. What we like about it is that it just it only requires two batteries to set the ignition off. And then it just runs off of a gas bottle. We've got a propane bottle outside and it's really efficient. It's like a bottle of propane will just run this for ages. So it'll last us months. Oh yeah, it'll last us ages. And that's why we really like the one in the van. So this is why we got for it in the outhouse. And what we also love about it is that it heats up the water really quickly. It's just pretty much instant. So sometimes it could be too hot. So you have to get the temperatures right on these, but there's been some, there's been some times where we turned it up like 50 degrees and it's been burning our skin. Yeah. Sometimes it does get really hot. So you have to like, inch these like to the right setting but um that, yeah. that bad boy is better than a house boiler yeah it is, it is it's really a lot good. more efficient and a lot more cheaper so that's why we decided to go for that again so yep and we've also got two windows in the outhouse and so when we'll have a shower we're just going to open up them both both those windows so we've got a lot of airflow coming in we've also got this corrugated metal on the walls originally when we first wanted to do the outhouse we we're going to try use the metal off the roof of the barn but then the way things worked out, it just wasn't going to be done in time. So we just bought some. So we're really happy with it. And I just think it looks really cool as well. So we've got this all siliconed in. We haven't actually had a shower in here yet. We've tested everything and everything's working, but we're yet to have the shower. So I think Dan's going to be christening that tomorrow morning, which would be nice for you. <laughs> what we also liked about the corrugated metal, it's like it's quite cheap to buy. And it's just an easy solution just to get it waterproofed in here pretty quickly. Our shower tray's in. It's it's massive, but it's not a space. It's nice to have some space after not having much space inside the van showering. Also got a toilet, which has just been so nice having a toilet that's in the outhouse rather than the little tiny compost toilet we had in the van. And we also built this little footstool so we can actually poop like the ancient Egyptians did for the squatty <laughs> our squatty potty. <laughs> it's actually better for you to poop like this, so know that. <laughs> and um. I like about this is what I like about this is that we can put our toilet rolls and stuff inside and it's just a little bit of extra storage in here. In here we have our sawdust and our little scoop just to cover up our number twos and our deposits in there. We've also got our little water container that just gravity feeds the water into the, the sink, which is really nice. We just turn it and then the water comes out. And we've also got this little cute little thing that my mom got us for Christmas. It's a coconut bowl. It's like a coconut that's been carved out into like a little flower shape. And it's just a nice little soap holder. So we've got some natural soap in there to wash our hands with. We've just got some little pieces and shells from places that we've been on our travels. We've got my artwork, which I really like. And Dan's dad also made us this little plant pot heater. So a candle just goes in the bottom and then it heats up the plant pot, which like radiates heat into the room, which we really like. So what we've done just to kind of cover the dodgy cuts and edges, we've just got a little bit of rope going around. We did this in the van as well, but what we're going to do is um, when I get more rope and more glue, I'm going to go around and do the rest of the, the corners and make it look nice and finish it off nicely. So that's the completed tour of the little outhouse. We're really happy with it. It's like 
much more luxurious than anything I've ever imagined having on the land so really chuffed with that. The reason why we're showing you guys this is because we've got some more projects coming up with the, hopefully the better weather so we want to start working on the barn which will be exciting and we've also got a couple of other projects so happy to get this out of the way so we can start working on other projects. So me and Laura's just had to do rock, paper, scissors to see who gets the unfortunate job climbing through the tiny hatch and squeezing our butts through there. Because the diesel heater's not working still and obviously we're not getting a lot of sun because it's raining and overcast. So we're charging the batteries, get, keep them warm, using that as a dryer for our wet clothes after working hard a day in the rain. Fortunately, I've got to climb through. <laughs> my butt has got a little bit fatter since uh, coming back to Portugal. I think it's all the pastel dinners. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not climbing through because I'll get exposed straight away. <laughs> it's not the most, it's not the most James Bond sexy. This is it. No, it's not. Ooh. Squeeze through there one night, Ooh. and we've got a knock on the van. <laughs> now this is always the hardest part. It's easy getting through. The, the hardest part's always getting back. Where your face plant. Me balls! <laughs> 20 minutes later! <laughs> oh. What you take down the whole partition wall with you? Oh, I probably wouldn't surprise with my building skills. I hear some cracks and crunches. Oh, leg on there. That's it. We've done it. Yes. Great success. Oh, anything to avoid that bloody rain. Exactly. 